Hey, what's up? This is Caleb with School of Motion, and in this After Effects-ish tutorial, we're gonna talk a little bit about video codecs. Now, this tutorial is gonna go into some details about how videos are actually compressed on a computer, and we'll even talk about color space and give you a few recommendations from the team here at School of Motion. So if you're ready to learn something new, let's get started. So the first thing that I wanna talk about here is the difference between a wrapper and a video codec. So a wrapper is an actual video container format that is going to house other elements that are important for our video. So for example, any video is going to have video and it's also going to have audio, but there can also be some other things contained inside a video like closed captioning formats and metadata. These are all bits of information that need to be stored inside a video container. So a wrapper format is basically the file extension that you see at the end of your video. So .mov is one of the most popular wrapper formats. Now for video codecs, there are lots of different ones that you can pick from. You know, the most popular being uh, ProRes, DNX, HR, H.264, uh, MPEG-2. These are all formats that are, are very popular codec formats, but they are different than a wrapper format. Now for audio, obviously there are lots of different types of formats as well, including AAC. Uh, for closed captioning, there's even a lot of different formats. And then for metadata, there are um, you know all sorts of different things that you may want to attach to your video file, like author, title, date of publication, things like that. So the big thing to remember is that the file extension is your wrapper and not the codec that you're using. So if you see a dot, MOV file format, that doesn't mean that the video inside is H.264. If you see a .mp4 file extension, that doesn't mean that the video inside is H.264 either. It's only a wrapper that contains a video codec. So let's take this a little bit further here. So I have an example composition and it's real simple. There's just some triangles that kind of get pulled up by some squares here. And I want to kind of talk about two different types of compression formats. So the first compression type that I want to talk about here is intra frame. That's intra with an A. So again, we're talking about codecs here. So I'm gonna play this back. This kind of illustrates what intra frame compression is about. Basically, a frame will get scanned and then a new frame will get created. So the computer scans one frame and it creates a compressed version of that frame for your exported video. And it'll just kind of continue doing this forever and ever. And it, really, this is just like taking, let's say, an image and then saving a new image. And it's just gonna do this over and over and create a video sequence. And this is generally the highest quality type of compression you can have. So in a motion graphics workflow, these intra frame codecs are also referred to as editing codecs or editing formats. So they basically just scan one image, one frame, and then export another frame one at a time. So this is very different from an inter-frame codec. So these inter-frame codecs are very different from intra-frame codecs because they use frame blending to help save on file space. So these are the type of codecs that are used online or um, whenever you're previewing something on your phone. These are very, very small video files that are, are very compressed. You know, you're not gonna wanna use these in an editing environment. But here's how they work. So an inter-frame codec has three different types of frames. They have I frames, they have P frames, and they have B frames. So I'll play this back here so we can see how each of them works. So an I frame is very similar to an intra-frame frame. It basically scans one frame and exports one frame. Now a P frame is really different. Basically it will scan the next frame and then scan the previous frame to create a brand new frame that only has the change data. So what I mean by that is, if anything is similar from frame one to frame two, it will be excluded from the P frame. But if anything changes, and in this sequence here, you know, we have some triangles and some little dots. I can kind of zoom in here. You can see that there's triangles and little dots. They will actually be the only thing represented inside of this P frame. So the background will remain the same because it is blended between frame one and frame two. Now a B frame is similar to a P frame, but it will actually scan all of the frame before and the frame after to create a brand new frame with the difference as well. So the more I frames that you have, the higher quality your final video will be. 
So whenever you're streaming footage, let's say from online or even from a satellite, and you know how it can sometimes get real blocky uh, and it can look like the people are just kind of jagged and like frozen, that's usually a result of the iframes not being transmitted properly. So iframes are incredibly important for interframe video compression. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between intraframe and interframe video format. So I'll go ahead and play this back here. And on the left here, we have intraframe video formats. And again, these are editing formats. These are formats that you want to use during the editing process. You probably are not going to send one of these file formats to your client. So ProRes is the most popular intraframe video format along with DNX HR and DNX HD. Now, Cineform is a newer compression codec that is really fantastic and it's showing a lot of promise, but we'll kind of see where it goes over the next few years along with all of these uh, other formats that are popular. Now, interframe again is the frame blending codecs. So here's a few uh, of the popular ones, H.264, MPEG-2, WMV, MPEG-4. All of these are very popular in the motion graphics world, but I'd say H.264 at this point is the most uh, appealing one to you as a motion designer. So now that we've talked about the difference between codecs, let's talk a little bit about color space because color is very important when it comes to exporting your footage and getting great high quality video. So another really important thing to think about is the color space. And in video, there are three main color spaces that you want to know about. 8 bit per channel, 10 bits per channel, and 12 bits per channel. 8 bits per channel is the type of video color space that is used online and in most delivery codecs. So um, with 8 bits per channel, there are 256 potential R, G, and B tones resulting in 16.7 million colors. That may sound like a lot, but it's actually not that much. And what can happen is there can be some stair-stepping issues known as banding. And so if this happens, you want to actually go in and tweak your colors in your video to reduce on some of the stair stepping. Most of the editing codecs that we've talked about here use 10 bits per channel and 10 bits per channel results in 1 billion different colors. So that really can significantly reduce on any banding issues that you may have. And there's also 12 bits per channel, which has 68 billion colors. And essentially at 68 billion colors, you can almost guarantee that there aren't going to be any banding issues. But 12 bits per channel is a lot. And the video files that use 12 bit per channel color spaces are really, really big. So as a motion designer, it's not that important to export 12 bits per channel every time. If you're doing visual effects work or color grading, yeah, 12 bits per channel is a good thing to use. But for most of your situations, you'll just want to use 10 bits per channel. And we'll talk about this in just a second. So let's talk about some of the recommendations from the team here at School of Motion. So if you are working in a color grading or visual effects environment, you will want to use either ProRes 444 or DNX HR 444. And the fours basically represent um, the color space in terms of chroma subsampling. That is another aspect of video compression that is just kind of deep. But basically uh, what it has to do with is just the way that color information is blended together. So 444 just basically means all of the colors are completely true to themselves. And so each of these two formats here are 12 bit, which, you know, talking about the color space that we uh, just talked about on the previous slide, um, that's very important when it comes to color grading. So if you're gonna be exporting your motion graphics in just a typical editing workflow, uh, you can use ProRes 422HQ or DNX HRHQX. And both of these formats are 10-bit formats. So there's a lot of color information there, uh, but you're not gonna get some of those banding artifacts that will result in 8-bit compression. So you'll want to use these formats if you're working with an editor or if you're exporting something from After Effects then bringing it into Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro to kind of chop it up. This is one of the formats that you'll want to use in that case. And when you're ready to deliver your final file to your client, you can export as an H.264 and an MP4 wrapper. And it's important to do the MP4 wrapper because it can play back on a PC and a Mac but the interesting thing is you can't export in H.264 in an MP4 wrapper in After Effects. You actually have to send it over to Media Encoder to export it. And we actually have a whole video tutorial about how to do just that. 
So your clients may ask for a different type of format and that's fine. You can export and send them whatever format they need. Uh, but if they're indifferent and they don't really know what they want, H.264 is really the way to go. So before we end things here, I want to show you where all of these things can be found inside of After Effects whenever you are ready to export. So uh, I'm just going to send this to the render queue. You can just go to composition, add to render queue. And then we'll go to our output module here and just kind of click on the lossless. So lossless actually means that it is perfect quality. It's uncompressed. You don't want to use lossless, uh, you know, unless you are just needing all that color information because you are going to be color grading. You typically don't want your project to be exported as lossless. So uh, under format here, this is the wrapper. And we talked about this earlier. So I'm going to select QuickTime here because there are a lot of different codecs inside of QuickTime but you can select any type of wrapper format that you want. So to get to your video codecs, all you have to do is click on format options here and you'll go to video codec and you can just hit this and drop down and see all sorts of different types of video codecs. Now, if we wanted to export in that very high quality visual effects format, we could select Apple ProRes here, or if we wanted to select a high quality 10 bit format, we could select 422 HQ right here or you could even select h264 it just depends on whatever format you need for your specific project and hopefully by this point you kind of understand uh, the different types of formats that you would possibly need and again there are even more codecs that you can export inside of adobe media encoder so if you go to composition add to media encoder queue it will actually send this composition over to Media Encoder. And this can take a few minutes or just a few seconds. It just depends on how big your project is. So once you're inside of Adobe Media Encoder, you can either select one of the presets down here and just drag and drop it onto your video, or you can click the blue text here and that will pop up this window where you can edit your composition by hand. And one thing to remember is the format here is not actually the video container. In After Effects it is, but in uh, Media Encoder, it's not actually the video format. Um, it is. It can be a codec or it can be a container format. It's, it's very, very confusing, um, but it's just important to, to note that distinction. So let's select QuickTime here and instead of preset here, we're going to go down to our video codec and we can select Apple ProRes, you know, 422 HQ. And let's say we want to match the source here and hit OK. And then all you have to do is hit the playback button here and it will export your video. All right, and that's the end of this tutorial. If you want to learn more about working with Codex, go check out the blog post over on School of Motion. And while you're there, you can download the free project files used in this tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments of this video. We'd be happy to answer any questions you may have about Codex or motion graphics in general. Thank you for watching. This has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.